Okay. The Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, for our Toronto centric listeners and viewers. Yes. Well, they've already tuned out, bud. We just spent an hour on the Habs. So, like, I was about to say, uh, sorry, but my dad's still here. He's a Habs. He's a Leafs fan. So, no, I I think, I think there's enough dedicated fans who are, are going to be tuning in for the Leafs stuff because they're doing pretty well right now. They've were their winners of 14 of their last 16. And they're playing some of their best hockey right now. They just swept through all the California teams. My good buddy Omar, who I uh, we chat regularly on uh, Zone Time on Yahoo Sports, he seems you know to be TikTok all in on this Tomar? team. Oh, dude, Tic Tac Tomar, him and I, we do a whole show together every Tuesday. He's well, I knew he's the that daddy. part, but yeah, yeah, that's 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 the homie. Like we're not just like he posted oh, just a picture of me on his it. account. It, like it made my dad. Oh yeah, it, so oh yeah, <laughs> Tic Tac Tomar is that dude. But people like him are like. They're all in on the Toronto Maple Leafs. They're all in on this year. It's like, all right, this is it. They found a way to play their best hockey. There's not a lot of there's not a lot of things you can nitpick about it. What have you made of all of the goodwill and all the good news around the Toronto Maple Leafs right now? All right, it, you called them a contender last week. Yeah, they look like a contender, bud. Like that's that has not changed. Whether they lost three in California or won three, that wouldn't change. It's it's a fascinating study though in sports fandom. Like I live in the city, man. Like I'm sitting, yes. I'm sitting right in the middle of this stuff. And you know, I, I'm just a guy who covers the NHL, but I get recognized a ton. Like people want to talk to me on the street or in a coffee shop about the Leafs. There's, there's, I wouldn't say there's no excitement. Of course there's excitement, but it, like it's for a team that's won 14 to 16 games. It could not be more muted. Like there used to be that, there used to be this joke, right? That like the Leafs are playing the parade. I can tell you. There's no one – like, I think the Leafs themselves are excited. I think that they see the potential they have. They see the progress they have. I'm not talking about the team, the organization, Kyle Dubas, you know, Sheldon Keefe, the players. But I think everything, the machinery around them is, like, sleeping on how good this team is. And I understand why. It, it's sort of it, – you get into the boy who cried wolf syndrome. Like, it, even if you're a media member, you're like, this team's really good. <laughs> like the, everyone just goes like, well, see in May, like, you know, like there's, there's an easy comeback and there's not really a, a back and forth there. This team's really good. Like, it, I don't care what metrics you believe in. Like if you just believe in straight points, they're at the top of the league. If you believe in shot metrics, they're at the top of the league in Corsi expect the goals. I think they're top three, uh, you know, slot shots, bing, bing, bing down the line. Jack Campbell's, I believe the best goaltender in terms of just pure save percentage and elite, like, they're not a perfect team. They're the same team that's lost five straight playoff series in the last five years. So that's not, it's not an insignificant point to raise, but if we're just going on, you know, this is supposed to be the quarter point. We're all supposed to get excited. It's the U S Thanksgiving's past. We know everything. Yeah. Um, they're easily a top five team in the league. Like I think like without question, it, it, there's no luck involved. In fact, I would say if you look at their top players, I'm willing to take a bet today that Austin Matthews will have a higher goals per game rate at the end of the season than he has today. I believe he's right at 0.5. I think he has 10 goals in 20 games as we're talking right now. Okay. I, I would I would take the over on that for his 78 games or whatever he's going to end up playing. So like you I think he does it? Yeah. Well, it's not, it's actually, it's not even controversial. If you look at his five years in the league, he's been above that. So what I'm saying is I don't think he's like, he's not been terrible, nothing like that, but I just think, Everything points to him scoring more than half a goal a game because that's all he's ever done in the NHL. And I don't think he's in decline as a as an offensive player. You know, even Marner. Anyway, it's hard. It's hard not to look at this team and think they're kicking ass and they're actually not firing yet. Um, so I'm much more bullish on them than the public. It's not a homer thing at all. I, I just think objectively, if you look at the numbers, like it again. It, they can play with you wherever you want to play. Like if you want to be like, yeah, yeah, but their shot metrics is like, no, wait, they're at the top of that. They're at the top of the points. Their, their top players actually aren't producing that much. I mean, where's other than like injury or something that could affect any team. You know, that's the question, right? Like Tampa is still performing great. Mm-hmm. Braden points now injured. Of course, Nikita Kucherov has been out for some time. They miss other players. They lost the third line from all the, their two cup wins. They're still performing great. Like that's that that's the mark of a champion, right? Like they're they are finding a way, and they've been really good for a team that hasn't had a lot go right. The Leafs haven't had a lot go wrong yet, and so that that would be the question because you take an eighty-two game season, something's going to go wrong. You're, you're going to lose players. Just 
things are going to happen. We live in a COVID year, right? We've seen teams have seven, eight, 10 players on the COVID list. You know, something like that could happen to the Leafs. And I don't know how they'll respond to it, but they stumbled out of the gate. And then all they've done since is look like they're going to win every single game. So it's hard to really critique them or question them. Is it okay if you're a Leafs fan scarred by all the pain from pretty much since 2013 and you just take a moment, you look at their success and you're just like, damn, I'm happy that they're winning and I'm just going to enjoy this. Is it okay to do that? It's okay. I, I know enough Leaf fans to know that like almost none of them are doing that. Like Steve Dangle right now is probably in a fetal position at his house. They've, they've won 14 of 16 and he's probably still like curled up imagining all the things are going to go wrong, which e bugs going to ruin it or which former Leaf is going to score three tomorrow night or whatever. Like I, I get it. They've been burnt a few times. And so it's hard to believe, it's fair. Yeah. but I, I would also say just as a life philosophy, like I know Tonight's podcast, we're going all over the place. If you can't enjoy what you're doing day to day, like what do you, you know, I don't know what's going to happen at the end of the year. I'm not saying this team's going to win the cup or anything, but if you're just looking at it day by day in late November slash early December, they are definitely good enough to win the cup compared to what we know right now. So I don't know what e-bug's going to screw it up. I don't know who's going to get injured. I don't know what the trades are going to look like at March 21st. Like it's too soon for all that. But if you're just here and if you are truly living in the moment, which I would advise everyone to do, not just really mm-hmm. to sports fandom, but just with your life, because we don't know what's around the corner. I think you should be excited. I think you should let yourself be excited. I, I'm going to go that far because, you know, we've talked about the pandemic tonight and it's still kind of hovering over a lot of stuff. And I get it. If, but if you love a certain team and I'll speak directly to Leaf fans on this case, like they're giving you what you want. They're not necessarily guaranteeing you the ultimate joy you want, but if you're just willing to like watch the games, like they're legitimately outplaying everyone they're playing and winning. So I'm not, I I would be confused other than, you know, they can't guarantee you they're going to do that in May. But if you're watching the day by day results, certainly looks to me like a group that's ready to take a step. Uh, We, I know we're well past the bell. Oh my God. Sorry. Not sorry, Adam. We rang the bell. Like Jesse's like, I got to eat dinner. I've been working yeah, for 12 dude. straight hours. We'll, we'll go through Brendan Lemieux very quickly. And then we'll get to some of the questions for ask CJ. Do you have any thoughts on, on the biting beef that has struck the national hockey league world? And uh, has Brady Kachuk? Well, you know, saying what he had to say, I don't know if you saw the Gilbert Gottfried to oh, read I, dramatic reading. I, I couldn't reading. not see that. Like I, I didn't even <laughs> search that out. <laughs> I get to see Gilbert Gottfried in my like feed. And I'm like, what the hell is this? The then, hell? I, then I watched it. It was amazing. <laughs> you know, there's not, there's not like a hot take here. Like it was brutal no. bite. I, I expect that it to be a 10 game suspension or more. Uh, it's not been handed down as we're recording this, but like, that's, I mean, sometimes you go so far, like even player safety can't find a reason not to really hit you hard. And so I think it's an easy decision for the league in the sense you got to send a strong message. I don't mind that Brady Kachuk said what he said. He said he's going to say either. it once and then he freaking said it, right? Like oh, he's yes. like, I'm only going to do this once, but I'm going to give you <laughs> seven straight minutes of wrestling cut promo here. I'm going to give Gilbert Gottfried the best lines he's ever had in his whole damn career. Uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, like I don't mean to make That's light good. of the situation. It shouldn't have happened, but I don't actually... In the, in the grand scheme of things, I don't think it's the end of the world. Hopefully, you got a tetanus shot. Everything's fine. Lemieux is going to sit out for a while. The teams are going to play again. We're going to talk about it. Love it. 